To me, a Volvo A60 H. Okay, well, we're right in the middle of modifying our truck, uh, trying to turn this vehicle into an actual working tipper truck, something that we can use in conjunction with the legendary Buckster and the Wina construction equipment over yonder there. I think it's going to be a good fit overall. Pretty good scale size. It's almost the same scale size as the, the uh, Wina construction equipment. We've already changed out our tires and wheels. We put on a set of RC four-wheel drive 1.9 Rock Crusher XTs on a set of uh, Red Cat Gen 7 plastic beadlock wheels with steel bead rings. <laughs> I custom painted our bead rings to match the truck a little bit. Same color as our servo, which is a equipment yellow, a farm equipment yellow. Now today's little modification, what I'm working on right now, is trying to modify our bed so that we can accept larger battery packs into this vehicle. I'm currently having trouble trying to fit a regular standard 2S LiPo into the truck. Very difficult to do. <laughs> Not much room in between the top of the battery tray and the bottom of our tipper box. On the bottom of our tipper box, they've got this plastic gusseting down here, these plastic supports running up the side of the tipper box. And that's interfering with our batteries. We're trying to fit a battery, a fatter battery in here. So I've been running WL Toys 2S LiPos in here, which are significantly smaller than a standard 2S LiPo just to save on space. <laughs> forget about putting a 3S LiPo in here. Just forget about it. And a 2S shorty pack, it won't fit in there either. Uh, just just won't fit. So this guy will fit in here. It's a very tight fit. The battery has been plastic dipped, so it's a little bit tighter than normal as far as our fitment goes. But when you're putting this stuff together, you have to push down on the box in order to get the pins in. It's extremely tight. I mean, you really have to push down on it in order to get these pins in. So what we're working on right now is removing some of the plastic gusseting off the bottom of the bed. These little supports right here. That way we can accommodate a fatter battery. And we can always just add more padding in this area. If we remove too much, well, we're stripping it right on down to the bottom of the bed. <laughs> but we can always add padding in here, a uh, neoprene or foam pad. We can always double side tape something like this in there. Uh, if we have to pad it up a little bit. So trying to remove the plastic, what's the best way of going about that? I was thinking about using a hacksaw or a bandsaw to try to cut this off, maybe a pair of wire cutters. As it turns out, a pair of needle nose pliers, angled needle nose, angled needle nose pliers seem to work out pretty good. I'm starting off right here at the back of the plastic. I'm grabbing it just like this, just a little bit at a time, and pinching and twisting. Just a little bit at a time, trying to keep it as flat as I can to the bottom of the chassis. Or to the bottom of the box. Try not to leave any remainder behind, but also try not to rip a hole in the bed of the truck. Because we want to use this bed as an actual working tipper box and not just a decoration. And I'm pretty sure we can do this. This vehicle is uh, is strong enough as it is right now with the stock 18 tooth gearing and the stock motor that we can haul a load of material in the back. Now, Tamiya doesn't want you to do that. They do not want you to use this in, uh, in that way. <laughs> but we are going to avoid our warranty and do it anyways. That is my game plan. That is the reason I purchased this truck. <laughs> Was to attempt to do this and turn it into an actual working tipper truck. So right now, once again, we are removing these strips very gently here. Just a little bit, bite at a time. Don't want to take too much. Yeah, first I was worried about the truck being a little bit underpowered for, as a tipper truck, but uh, I think we can drop our pinion gear down maybe one tooth. We're going to have to custom mount our motor, but I think we can drop it down from an 18 to a 17, possibly. Once again, we're going to have to custom mount our motor in there. The way the pinion gear is set up in here, it's driving two counter gears at the same time. So we're driving, we're adjusting our motor up and down in between two counter gears. So if our pinion gear gets to be too small, it won't fit. It'll just slide right in between them. <laughs> so right now our 18 is sitting right about here. I think we can get a 17 in there and uh, possibly get it to work. But once again, we're going to have to redrill our motor mounts and... Uh, play around with it a little bit to get that to work. But I think between the combination of uh, 
either dropping that pinion gear and changing out our motor to possibly a 80 turn. I've got a 55 turn here that we're going to put in next. But worst case scenario, we can go to an 80 turn or 85 turn or whatever is available up in that area. And that'll provide a little bit more low end torque. Now, once again, currently this thing does have more than enough power to haul a full load of dirt with a stock motor and the stock gearing. You can load this thing up with dirt and it has no problem moving that around. It's a little bit fast, but it has no problem moving it. So I think once we, if we can adjust our gearing and drop it down at least one tooth and mess around with the motor a little bit, um, we'll probably get some halfway decent results out of this truck. Maybe, hopefully, crossing my fingers. Once again, that was a purpose for purchasing this truck. Now you can go out and buy like a Tamiya Dyna head. The Dyna head actually has portal uh, axle units on the ends, or portal drive units on the ends of the A-arms, which gives the truck a little bit more of a suspension lift, but also reduces the gearing and makes the truck more crawler friendly with that 18 tooth uh, gear that's in here. So if you were to get the Tamiya Dyna head and maybe put the uh, tipper truck cab and tipper truck box on the back of the Dyna head, <laughs> uh, you could have a nice low uh, gearing setup on that thing. Now the only problem with that is that those portal axles lift the vehicle up a little bit higher and you wouldn't be able to reach in the back of them with the legendary tip, uh, Buckster or any of these wine of construction pieces of wine of construction equipment. These guys have been modified. Uh, all these excavators have been modified so they can lift up, 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 up a little bit higher. Legendary Buckster is pretty much lifting up in the same position that it was in stock form, which is just a little bit shy of making it into our bed right now. It comes up to about right here. So it can't quite make it into the bed. My excavators, they can make it into the bed, <laughs> but the Buckster can't. All right, so there we go. We just trimmed down the bottom of our bed. We got all that plastic off of there. It's looking pretty rough. We could come through with some sandpaper and sand that down for sure if we wanted to. Or just leave it. Either way, it'll probably be okay. <laughs> Once again, I plan on turning this thing into an actual working tipper truck, so I might actually take some aluminum and run a strip of aluminum all the way down this whole inside right here. So who knows how that's going to work out. All right, so now we got our bed uh, rails ripped out of there. We can kind of mock fit our battery back in here. Mock fit our bed back on here. We don't have our bed stays in place to lock our bed in at the back, but we should have more than enough room to fit this battery in here right now, which we do. We've got plenty of room. Plenty of room to fit that battery in there. Lots of air gap in between the bed and the battery. Let's see if we can fit a 3S LiPo in there. We got a 2S in there that's been plastic dipped, so it's a little bit thicker than your standard 2S, and is also somewhat water resistant. Somewhat. Let's try a 3S LiPo and see how that one fits. This is a Electron Pro 5200 milliamp 3S LiPo, 5.2 amp. I've got my cables facing out the front of the battery tray just because it's easier. <laughs> it's easier to run it to the motor or to the ESC. We'll run it out the back here just to see if we can fit it in here. Get that to drop down in. And what are we looking at here? We're hitting on something. I don't know what it is. It's not our battery. on the battery so right now either side of our bed supports right here are uh, catching on the battery just on the inside of the battery that inside of that bed support right there is catching on the battery and that's preventing us from fitting this 3s lipo in here comfortably Now 
we could come in and just trim some of this material off right here probably just a little bit of this edge camera's not focusing in on it but probably come right up to the edge of this right here and trim that off right through here and knock this little edge off right along there this little nub and that little nub and we could probably fit it in there probably I don't know if we're gonna be able to knock that off with a pair of pliers without destroying the whole darn thing try to do this gently <laughs> oh no she's tearing away she's tearing away her bed support was tearing away there still trying to do this gently here ABS plastic now the only problem with doing something like this is that this could damage your battery if you don't get this nice and smooth a sharp edge on here could rip through the side of your soft pack battery and that could be trouble now let's try a pair of side cutters wire cutters let's see if we can trim this out just a little bit more efficiently here Pinch my fingers in the side cutters, wire cutters here. Hacking vehicles to pieces. I'm trying to leave that bed stay in place. I don't want to lose this other half of that bed stay. I'm just trying to trim off that little bit of gusseting that's on the back half. And see if we can get this battery to fit in here. If it won't fit in here, then we might have to lose this little part right here. After we get done uh, busting this stuff away here. It's pretty rough down either side. I need to take an exacto knife or a razor knife and try to clean that up a little bit here. Kids, be careful with knives. Have your parents do this for you. Let them watch the video so they know what they have to do. And then let them do this for you so they don't so you don't get hurt in the process. Razor knife blades can snap when you're doing this kind of stuff. You don't want that. Chunk of metal coming towards your eye, wear safety glasses. In case any plastic or anything else flying off at you.
apologies if you can't see what's going on. I can't really see what's going on either because I'm trying to show you guys and gals what's uh, going on. <laughs> Got to sacrifice on my own angles here as well. This chunk of plastic is sitting in here at a weird angle. Knife won't, uh, I can't get in here with this knife too easily. Just a regular utility knife. Slightly longer utility knife, flatter cut. Well, we got her knocked down a little bit there on either side. Mock fit it back in here. And we don't have our bed stays put in place, but we're just trying to get a rough idea here how things are looking. And no problem, we got it. We got it in on that one. Remove those little bit of bed stays on either side. Got plenty of room to get our pins in on top. She's a poor camera angles, boys and girls. And plenty of room for our 3S LiPo in there. Our box is dropping down just fine. We still have our outer, inner and outer bed supports put in place. Just trimmed off that little bit of gusseting on that outer edge, which gave us enough clearance to get past uh, the sides of the battery. So we're good to go. And there we go. We are all finished. Modification worked out great. We got all our plastic gusseting trimmed off the bottom of the bed. <laughs> And everything is clearing just fine. We've got a 3S LiPo sitting in there right now, our Electron Pro 5200 milliamp 3S LiPo, and everything is clearing beautifully. All we had to do after trimming off that little bit of gusseting was just remove our other little side supports right here from our inner um, bed stays right there. Just trim that off. And that was our final little bit of movement that we, or uh, room that we needed in order to make this happen extra little bit of give that we needed so we don't have our bed stays in there right now but it doesn't matter uh, she is sitting perfect on there with that electron pro 3s lipo absolutely no problem getting our body pins in through our bed i mean no problem it's just right there don't even have to force it and plenty of clearance with our battery in our bed we could actually put a little piece of neoprene foam in between that if we wanted to. Something like this, perhaps. Perhaps. Or possibly something thinner. Just a mental note when you're putting something, doing that with your uh, own battery. You need to put a little bit of padding in there. That one's just a little bit too thick. We can't get our uh, box to drop down all the way without pushing on it. So find a thinner piece. <laughs> I've got several different uh, thicknesses of this foam laying around here. This one is significantly thinner than the one we just previously had in there. Significantly thinner by far. We probably have to just double this one up a couple times. Perhaps. Put a little piece on just like that. Yep, and that would work out perfectly. Put down a little bit of tension, and uh, we've got plenty of room to get our body pins in. And we have a little piece of foam to protect our battery. So there we go, boys and girls. Quick, easy fix for modifying your Tamiya Volvo A60H or A60Y or A60 whatever. I'm not sure if there is an A60Y. I just recently seen uh, on A Main Hobby's website not being sponsored by anybody. 
but they had a to me a Volvo listed as the A60Y. So not too sure if that's a new model. <laughs> they still show the A68 uh, pictured in the picture, so uh, not too sure. Regardless, a little bed modification there for you guys and gals. Uh, that way we can fit our larger battery packs in there. Worked out pretty easy. Pretty easy to do once again using our small angled needle nose pliers to just tear away that plastic on the bottom of the bed uh, as well as a utility knife and a couple of utility knives to uh, trim off that last little bit on our bed stays once again right here and here to allow this inner support to slide past that battery while it's sitting inside the battery tray so there we go, boys and girls. Nice, easy fix. Nice, easy solution for all of you out there with the Timia Volvo A60H. Wanting to fit in a larger battery. 2S LiPo, 3S LiPo. There we go. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Five minutes, ten minutes. Uh, probably take you longer to remove the bed than it will to remove all the plastic off of it. <laughs> Well, that's going to do it, boys and girls. Very much appreciated for y'all sticking around and watching the video. As always, questions and comments are always welcome. And we will see you all on the next one.